Hello everybody and welcome to Gravitational Fields Lesson 5. In the last video we looked at gravitational field strength and, and there to remind you is the definition of gravitational field strength. So gravitational field strength is defined as the force per unit mass acting on a small test mass at a point in a gravitational field. From that definition we uh, brought out of it the general equation which is g is equal to f over m uh, and remember from a unit point of view uh, for g uh, if we go straight from um, obviously 40 divided by mass uh, then we get newtons per kilogram and that is the equivalent of meters per second squared and in the last video we did show that those two units are, are equivalent of each other uh, and the SI base unit of gravitational field strength is meters per second squared. From that we then did a little bit of derivation and got the radial field equation out which was g is equal to minus g big M over r squared. In this video then we'll be moving on to the next of our key equations to describe gravitational fields and we're going to look at the definition uh, and obviously um, the background behind and the theory behind gravitational potential. Now when it comes to gravitational potential what I prefer to do uh, when I'm teaching it is just to go straight in with the definition which you can see there on the screen um, and then really just break it down and explain exactly what it means and what we're trying to do with gravitational potential. Um, so there you go straight away um, the definition is that the gravitational potential at a point is the work done per unit mass in moving a small test mass from infinity to that point. Now that's uh, quite an involved definition but what we're going to do is we're just going to try and break that down now and really understand what the definition is trying to tell us and maybe why it's trying to tell us what it's telling us. Okay and um, firstly then we're just going to take um, a a mass be a planet a star whatever that's going to be and we're going to say that it has a mass as usual of capital M now what again what we're trying to do with the definition is to say well at a certain point here if we had a small test mass we're going to be measuring this idea uh, or calculating this idea of gravitational potential but let's go further back to um, or even further away um, and let's have a look at this bit here what we're doing is we're moving a small test mass now we're, we're happy with the idea of a small test mass we've talked about that a couple of videos ago um, so that shouldn't be that new an idea now let's have a look at this bit let's have a look at the from infinity bit so let's ignore this point that I've just drawn in red and let's come all the way out and we're going to go out to infinity and we're still going to have of course that small test mass now what's significant about that point infinity well let's go all the way back to the first uh, first video of this topic and remind ourselves of Newton's gravitational law Newton's gravitational law says f is equal to minus g big M little m over r squared now obviously if we are at infinity then we're saying that the distance is infinite Okay, we're an infinite distance away. If we were to plug infinity into this equation here, um, we, we won't necessarily <laughs> get into the conversation about what is infinity squared. I think we'll leave that for the mass department to deal with, really. Um, but what we what we're seeing in a in a very basic way uh, is that f will become zero at that point at infinity in other words if we have a small test mass at infinity the force acting on it will be zero and when you look at the equation and, and understand what an inverse square uh, means and how again mathematically that works 
the force will only ever be zero at infinity. Okay. Now, yes, okay, as we get further and further away, uh, that force at big distances becomes negligible, especially when we're dealing with uh, going up to you know, scale of the universe when you've got uh, galaxies closer to each other and all this kind of stuff. But that's not really the point. We're looking at the theory and why we're saying from infinity in the theory. So that, at least in theory, will be the only point where force is equal to zero. Even if you bring that mass in just a little bit, where R is now less than infinity, the force will now be greater than zero. And of course that force, that's still the small test mass, that force will act towards the main mass, the large mass that we are studying. Now the next bit of the definition that we need to think about is the work done bit. Now I want to go back to the red point that we've put on there for a second. Obviously just like the, the green bit that we've just drawn, um, if we've got a mass at that point in a gravitational field, then there will be a force acting in that direction. It will be an attractive force uh, as described by Newton's gravitational law. Um, so acting towards the centre of mass of the planet, the star, um, whatever this larger mass is. Now, if we want to move that mass further away, from the planet, so we're talking about the small test masses. If we want to move the small test mass further away from the larger mass, then we would need to do work against the attractive force of gravity. So work needs to be done. In other words, energy needs to be transferred into that system in order to move it further away from the larger body, that planet, that sun, whatever it's going to be. Now, interestingly, what the uh, definition says is that it's the work done in moving it from infinity to that point. Well, by what we've just said, we're doing work to move it further away. We could very easily have a look at the work that we would need to do in order to move it from this point here, which of course will be a distance r away from the center of mass of the larger object. Okay, We could uh, very easily do a calculation work done. We know that work done, of course, is force times displacement in the direction of the force, but we'll assume uh, that theta is zero at this point and ignore it. Uh, so work will be done to move it away all the way out to infinity. That is work done by us. That is energy that we would need to put into that system. The other way around though, when we're moving the mass from infinity to that point, it's the gravitational field itself that is doing the work really. In other words, we would get energy out of the system. Now because of that, the work done is in the wrong direction. Okay, We should be doing work, at least on the diagram, to move it from left to right, to move it from the point at R out to infinity. But instead what the definition is doing is it's doing it the other way around. What we're going to end up with then, and which is going to be a little bit strange at first, is that we're going to almost end up with work done being negative. Okay, and you'll see why when we derive this properly in a few moments time. Now let's have a look at uh, deriving an equation from the definition. So let's work our way through uh, the gravitational potential is. Uh, so the symbol that we use for gravitational potential, uh, if you've already had a look at electric potential, it's exactly the same symbol. It is a capital V. Okay, so we've got the uh, is the, which obviously translates as equals. Um, and then the key term, again, that we've got in our equation is work done per unit mass. 
so we can say work done per unit mass now quite often you will see this written as um, delta w on the top uh, and a delta v in the um, uh, for the potential as well but we'll just sort of leave that out for now just so we don't confuse ourselves too much but we'll come back to that idea at some point so v is equal to w over m now we've got an equation for work done that we saw before uh, w is equal to fs cos theta that's the standard equation for work done now we're going to assume that theta is equal to zero uh, because we're not doing things at any kind of weird angle here uh, so therefore cos of theta will equal to one and that term will disappear when we substitute that into the equation we still got v is equal to we still got the divided by mass but the derivation now says f times s next substitution we're going to make then is to plug in newton's gravitational law f is equal to minus g m m over r squared and we're going to substitute that into that equation so let's do that v is equal to here comes the substitution then minus g big m little m over r squared and we need to multiply that by what's left which is the s over m bit now in the next stage we can see that we have uh, the small mass so that's the mass of the small test mass on the top and the bottom of this equation so that mass will cancel with that mass and therefore the mass of the small test mass uh, as we've seen before as we saw in gravitational field strength in the last video is irrelevant the last stage then is just to make a note about s and r now in this equation we are using two different symbols um, but really they both mean distance they've both got the same unit they're both meters and therefore they both still mean distance um, what we can do therefore is another bit of cancelling we can cancel that s uh, don't forget on the bottom we've got r squared and therefore we can cancel with one of those r's just to leave one of the r's in place that then gives us the equation finally that v is equal to minus g big m over r that then is the equation for gravitational potential uh, obviously in a radial field whereas that one there is the general equation finally of course before we move on we need to think about units and let's go back to the general equation work done we know has the unit of joules our mass has the unit of kilograms and therefore the unit of gravitational potential is joules per kilogram the next step then is to try to draw the graph of gravitational potential against distance uh, but first we just need to sort of make a note of a couple of things now we've already looked at units but let's just remind ourselves at that work done being a transfer of energy is a scalar as is mass now whenever you multiply scalars together or have a scalar divided by a scalar um, what we end up with is a scalar as well so gravitational potential itself is a scalar now that's uh, not controversial at all we you know relatively easy that bit what can potentially become confusing though is that when we have a look at the equation below we've got this minus sign explicitly stated now with everything else on the right hand side being positive 
universal gravitational constant is a constant therefore positive mass is always positive uh, and the distance now the way that we define distance here uh, is always from the center of mass to a point and therefore can't be negative either with this um, negative sign though what we're doing is we're explicitly stating that gravitational potential is always negative now of course that in itself shouldn't be that much of a surprise if we go back to the idea uh, of work done and understanding the direction in which work has to be done uh, to move it one way and, and all that kind of stuff um, that negative sign really is a consequence of what we said earlier about work being done what can sometimes confuse though is that combination of the two ideas the fact that potential is a scalar but at the same time is always negative you've always been taught that scalars don't have a direction well quite rightly yeah they don't have a direction we're just defining a number here a magnitude here as always being negative let's then bring some axes in and try to, to draw this graph then straight away you can see that the axes that I've put on the screen um, they're not the normal axes that we're used to dealing with now of course if if we think about a, a sort of double positive double negative so uh, what's sometimes called a four quadrant graph the vast majority of things uh, that we deal with uh, vast majority of graphs we draw only use that quadrant there where we have positive y and positive x um, obviously there are certain situations like when we're looking at current potential difference characteristics for components where we might use the negative y negative x quadrant as well and uh, we, they don't crop up too often the quadrant that we're using for this graph though is this quadrant down here so it's the negative y positive x quadrant of the graph now if we have a look first before we do it in the negative way let's just remind ourselves if we have a graph of y is equal to 1 over x um, the inverse graph in other words it is shaped like that so that's the inverse graph um, again nothing controversial about that we've seen that before with the graph that we're about to draw though which is going to be of gravitational potential against uh, distance what we're doing is we're taking that one over x that one over r graph and we are just going to rotate it around the horizontal axis we're going to rotate it around the x-axis what we're left with then is a graph which looks oh, let me try and draw that a little bit smoother which looks like that now just like the 1 over x graph it never actually touches either of the axes uh, again in theory until we do get out to infinity so there again on a fresh screen is the graph now uh, as i said before there's really nothing necessary to worry about with this graph all it is is one over x graph that shape that inverse shape reflected in the x-axis and that's that's really all it is um obviously what we just need to think about if we get further away um so obviously where we have r is equal to zero that would be uh, the center of mass of the object that we are studying now as we get further away um, you can see that as we go to the right on r then on the graph we will be moving in that direction and therefore on the v axis we're moving in that direction in other words as we increase or as we increase the distance from the center of mass uh, we're moving up on the v-axis so we're, we're actually increasing it as a number or if you prefer to say uh, that we're getting less negative you're more than welcome to uh, but actually the value will be 
increasing now that graph itself uh, again we're going to come back to it in future videos we're going to study it in more detail and understand uh, what information we can garner from it and how it really works um, just for now though there's the graph at least if we understand where it's come from then we're happy with that so now let's just do a quick question to do with gravitational potential uh, and here you can see it uh, calculate the gravitational potential at a height of 10,000 kilometers above the surface of the earth as usual pause the video go away work out an answer and come back once you've got one uh, looking at the answer then, um, at least the first bit is going to be relatively straightforward. So V is e, let's just write the equation out, V is equal to minus GM over R uh, and therefore minus, well, uh, universal gravitational constant then, uh, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 multiplied by the mass of the Earth which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Now, of course, before we put R in, you'll, uh, you may or may not hopefully have noticed where this question tries to catch you out. Um, and this is a, a classic example of where you may be caught out. It says 10,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth but of course, remember that the way that R is defined, R is defined from the center of mass of the, uh, the body that we're studying. And therefore, when we do R, we, we've, we've got to take the 10,000 kilometers, um, which of course, well, 10,000 kilometers, uh, you can say, well, 10,000 kilometers is the same as saying 10 times 10 to the 6 meters or is uh, therefore the same as saying 1 times 10 to the 7 meters what we obviously need to do to that is then to add in the radius of the earth as well which from your data sheet you can see so the radius of the earth from your data sheet is 6.37 times 10 to the 6, 6,370 kilometers. Um, what we end up then with is 1.637 times 10 to the 7 meters as the uh, total distance there. Coming back into it then, uh, let's plug that in. So 1.637 times 10 to the 7 meters and plug it into your calculator and your calculator is going to tell you uh, minus of course uh, here we go 2 4 3 uh, 6 oh, loads of figures on here 6 6 8.91 uh, obviously that's uh, completely unwieldy uh, as an answer when we put it into standard form uh, we might do it once we've rounded um, as 2.44 sorry minus 2.44 times 10 to the 7 joules per kilogram um, or uh, personally again with me preferring to use si prefixes i would probably write that then as minus 24 Point four uh, megajoules per kilogram. To summarise, then, uh, in this video, we've looked predominantly at gravitational potential, and there's the definition again on the screen for you. The gravitational potential at a point is the work done per unit mass in moving a small test mass from infinity to that point. Uh, the equations that we derived from that then were the general equation V is equal to W over M uh, and then we also got minus GM over R from that as well. Finally, of course, we had a look at the graph of V against R, uh, obviously spending a little bit of time discussing it because it's a, a graph um, in a sort of orientation that we're not necessarily quite used to using so that's it for this video as usual thanks for watching and i hope you got something really useful out of that and i'll see you in the next video